In this video I will show you step by step how to add an ambient lighting effect to your TV which definitely enhances the viewing experience while watching your favorite YouTube videos or while playing games. Let's get started. The star of this build is the light sword itself, which is an APA 102 LED strip with 60 LEDs per meter. By simply applying 5 volts from my lap bench power supply to its 5 volt and ground pin, connecting the data pin to pin 3 and the clock pin to pin 13 of an Arduino Nano and uploading a simple test code, the first 60 LEDs light up white and reveal that the LED strips requires around 2.7 amps per meter. Since I will need up to 4 meters of the strip for a 55 inch TV, that would equal a total current draw of 10.8 amps. But since I later reduced the maximum brightness to 75%, the measured maximum current draw was only around 5.8 amps. That is why a 5 volt 8 amp power supply offered enough power for all of the components. And speaking of components, there are actually quite a lot of them necessary for this kind of project. And I will talk about each one in a second. But as always, you can find a parts list and additional information as always in the video description. Now before attaching the LED strip, we need to prepare the Raspberry Pi Zero. For that, we need a microSD card, which we firstly plug into a computer in order to download the light version of Raspbian and extracting it onto the SD card with the help of the Win32 disk imager. And then we can plug the card into the Pi. Afterwards, I connected an HDMI compatible screen and an USB on the go adapter to the Pi in order to hook up a USB hub and thus a Wi-Fi dongle and keyboard. After powering the Pi and the installation of the operating system was complete, I logged in as user Pi with the password Raspberry, opened the Raspberry configuration in order to activate SSH and opened the network configuration in order to add the SSID and password of my wireless network. After activating the Wi-Fi connection, the dongle should blink and thus the preparation of the Pi was complete and it was time to mount the components to the backside of the TV. We started with the LED strip in the down right corner, measured the appropriate length and cut it. Then we created the same length for the opposite sides and repeated this procedure for the upper and lower side of the TV. Afterwards, we continuously removed the protective tape of the LED strip and pressed it onto the TV so that the adhesive would stick properly. But while doing that, make sure that the arrow on the strip completes a clockwise or anti-clockwise rotation. Once the LED strips were mounted, I used small pieces of solid wire to connect the last clock out and data out of each strip piece to the following clock in and data in. Afterwards, we prepared the power supply by creating two pieces of Velcro tape according to its size, securing them to it, attaching the complementary Velcro tape to the TV and pushing the supply onto it. For the wiring, we used a distribution box which we mounted to the TV with Velcro tape as well, right before we pushed a 3x 1.5 square millimeter wire with attached plug into it. Afterwards, we added a Vago terminal to each wire, directed the input wires of the power supply into the box and hooked up each one to one face. Next, we added another distribution box to the TV in which the 5V output of the power supply will be distributed. To do that though, I firstly soldered a 075 square millimeter wire to each 5V and ground pin of the four strip pieces. Afterwards, we used hot glue to secure the wire to the TV and guided it to the box so that we could connect it to the 5V and ground Vago terminal. Once the LED power wiring was complete, we used Velcro tape to mount the Raspberry Pi to the TV and saw the wire for ground to pin 6 and a wire for 5 volts to pin 2, which then got hooked up inside the second distribution box. The only two wires left for the Pi were on pin 19 for the first data in pin of the LED strip and pin 23 for the first clock in pin. 
Then we secured the USB hub with plugged in USB video grabber and Wi-Fi dongle to the TV as well as the USB on the go adapter. Afterwards the input of the grabber connects to an AV cable which on the other side connects to the output of an HDMI to AV converter. Obviously we secured this converter and the AV cable to the TV and mounted an HDMI splitter to the other side of the TV. This splitter will receive the HDMI signal from your preferred entertainment system and provides it for the TV to display and the HDMI to AV converter, which then provides it for the Pi to process. And if you're confused, this diagram should explain the wiring connections pretty well. After connecting the power input of the splitter to the 5V and ground terminal of the second distribution box, the hardware part of this project was complete and it was time to bring the TV in its original position. For the software part, I firstly downloaded and opened the Hypercon Hyperion configurator. Then I determined the IP address of the Pi by using the information provided by the router and used this IP address to establish an SSH connection through the Hypercon tool. Now all I had to do was to click install Hyperion and wait for roughly 5 minutes until the SSH log presented a successful installation text. Afterwards I chose the utilized LED type, typed in the amount of them on all of the sides, adjusted the offset so that the first LED is in a downright corner, increased the update frequency to 30Hz, decreased the luminance gain to 75% and activated the grabber. After creating the configuration file, I uploaded it through the SSH connection, started Hyperion, which now should present a rainbow swirl behind the TV, and immediately noticed that the red and blue color was switched. So I changed that in the configuration file, uploaded it again, and took a screenshot of what my TV currently displays. By adjusting the crop on all of the sides, I slowly and carefully removed the black border of the screenshots, but once that was done, the ambient lighting did not react to the image and the SSH log presented error messages. The problem was the grabber itself, which uses an STK1160 chipset. The solution is to use another grabber, which utilized the UTV007 chipset. After plugging it in, the LEDs finally reacted to the image displayed on the TV. To end this project, we adjusted the colors of the LEDs with different example pictures, but there is definitely enough information about this process on the wiki site of the Hyperion software. And for the final enhancement, we also downloaded the Hyperion app for Android, in order to control the LEDs and even play some interesting animations. I hope you like this project. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative! And I will see you next time.